So I've been working on this little tank game project and for that I needed a system which would orient the mesh of my character to match whatever slope I'm driving up on, obviously. And I think this is actually a pretty good tutorial to make. So let's get into how to make a system that will do this. I'm not going to recreate the entire system with uh, turning the individual parts of the tank, but you can download the finished project file here with the Alliance with Floor code in the description down below to my Patreon. And that will include uh, this model for you to try it out with. But as you can see right here, if I try to go up this slope, uh, yeah, that doesn't really work all too well, now does it? So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go into my third person character and we're going to make a new custom event and we'll call that align to floor and before we start coding uh, whatever goes in there we're going to look for uh, event tick which doesn't exist on here yet so we're going to make it and we're going to run this every frame so we'll say align to floor in event tick uh, this is going to need to uh, have a input parameter and we'll call that delta seconds and that will be a float and in event tick, we will connect these two up to each other so we can pass that through. First things first, in the align to floor, we're going to align trays by channel. And we'll set the channel to whatever trace channel you want. I'm going to use visibility myself. Then we'll get a reference to our skeletal mesh. And from that, we will get the world location of that mesh component. And we will also uh, get the up vector of that component. The word location will be the start of the line trace. And then the end of the line trace will be the word location minus the up vector multiplied by... And we'll multiply this up vector by something like 100 or so. Depending on how sensitive you want this to be, how far removed from the ground you want to be before it starts doing this you might want to increase or decrease this number. 100 is a pretty decent number for most cases because you have to be very close to the ground for this to actually take effect. And then we put that into the minus right here. And that will be the end of our line tracer. That will result in a hit result output, which we will split up into all of its individual components, which does a lot of them. We're only going to be using one of them, so don't worry about that. We're going to do a little bit of math here in a second, but first what we will do is we'll get another reference to our mesh just to keep things neat, and we will set the world rotation for that. And we're going to calculate what that rotation should be, uh, but that's the only execute a pin that we're going to hook up to this. So back to our line trace by channel. What we're going to be using here is our out impact normal. That is the angle at which we hit whatever is beneath us. And we're going to use that in a get slope degree angles node. This is a fantastic node. So we'll put that into the floor normal. And then we need to get the right axis vector and the up vector and for those we will be using the right vector and the up vector from the actor itself not from the mesh because that can mess things up a little bit so we will get the right vector from the actor and we'll get the up vector from the actor we can simply put those into there and that will give us a pitch and a roll in the degrees uh, for the slope that we're on currently. But, and I do need to show you uh, the example here real quick. If we have a line tracer that goes down in here, it will output the normal that's pointing outward. And that's not the orientation that we're going to want to use. So we want to invert these degrees because otherwise, instead of aligning to the floor, we're going to be perpendicular to the floor, which is the exact opposite of what we want. So what we'll do is we'll use a negate float. You can also just multiply this by uh, negative one, if that is what you prefer. Uh, so you can also just do this. And that pretty much does the same thing. It's really whatever you want to do. 
And these two we're going to use to make a rotator. So we'll add a make rotator node. And the pitch here is going to go into the, weirdly enough, the roll. And the roll is going to go into the pitch. Now we just need the yaw. And the yaw is going to be whatever the yaw is for the mesh uh, at that point. So we want another reference to our mesh. And we will get the world rotation. We will break that rotator and take the yaw out of that into our make rotator. And with that, we pretty much have our system working. There's a little extra thing that we're going to do in a second, but let's first test whether or not this works to begin with. So let's test if this works now. I have my debug lines enabled, so the line traces all seem correct. If we go up this slope, we'll see our tank actually angles at the same angle as the slope. It's floating a little bit above the slope, but that is an issue with the collision more so than anything else. So we can just move our tank down a little bit to make that work slightly better. But you might note that it is very snappy in the way it changes its angle on these little ledges here, which that can be fine, but it can also be a little bit jarring. So let's take a look at how we can change that around, because now we're just immediately setting it to whatever this rotator spits out. Instead, what we can use is a R interp 2, and that takes in whatever our current rotation is. So we already have our mesh get world rotation, so we can put that into there. And then we can put in a target rotation that we want to be at. And that will be our make rotator. Then we all the way back at where we uh, started this custom event. That's the reason we have this delta seconds, because that needs to go into the R interp 2. And then we have the interp speed, which is the faster this is, the faster it goes from the current to the target. So if we set this to like the number 2, and then we hook this up into the new rotation, you will be able to see if we go through this, it rotates very slowly and well actually this is much too slow so if we set this to something like 10 it will be much faster but it will still be relatively smooth in the way it changes its rotation which makes it feel much more like how you expect a tank to feel like and of course you don't need to do this with a tank you can do this with any kind of character uh, but a tank is a pretty good example to show how this works and now we will just be able to drive along any surface and match its angle very very easily so if you want this project with this whole custom event a built in there's a link down below in the description to the patreon or where you have the entire project file downloadable it's a pretty easy system i'm sure you'll be able to figure it out relatively easily and a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 